Thank you for joining the Music Is first part series. I'm going to do a very quick intro and then I'm going to bring in our first live guest who is Young Warrior. So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining the Music Is series. As you may or may not know, I am Tali and I am the founder of Kaya, which stands for Come As You Are. And I'm a sound system, one of three female sound systems in the UK. Um, Tali, aka Kaya, come as you are, everyone knows me as. And I decided to start this music is series really because obviously the times that we're currently in, because of what music means to me and because of the industry that I'm in. And so I thought, if I'm feeling like this, then I'm sure most of the people that I know who are in the industry are feeling the same way. So I decided to reach out to a few of the entertainers, inspirations, etc., that I knew. And here we are at the Music Is series with my very, very, very first guest, Young Warrior, who's actually the very first person to give me my first live show. So yes, I'm so, so happy that he has joined us. And yeah, is my very first guest. So I will give over to the man himself, Young Warrior, who is not only a sound system and the guy that gave me my first gig, but also a producer, son of the legendary Jashaka, and a legend himself. So here we are. <laughs> greetings, 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 bro. How you doing? Well, fine, <laughs> How you doing? I'm Tell the people who you are. And yeah. Well, greetings, everybody. My name is Young Warrior, as many may know or may not know. Uh, sound system owner, music producer, um, entrepreneur, event host, promoter, DJ, all of those kind of things. And um, yeah, uh, firstly, big up yourself, T, for doing this. I'm always here supporting any young entrepreneurs or any young, anything young to do with reggae music. People know I've always, um, it, I've always fought for that. So big up yourself. Um, I was firstly obviously wanted to say condolences to the all of the people who have passed during this time. It's been a difficult time. Um, most re and most recently, obviously, I spoke to you earlier, um, Bag Baggy from uh, Unique Sounds uh, record label, a good friend of mine, you know, person that I knew for a long time, played with him, had the pleasure of playing with him and, you know, his mother, Nafia, and all of that. So condolences to the family and friends and those who knew him. Um, yeah, so big up yourselves, young people, mums, are doing. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's obviously a very, very trying time for many, many reasons, especially us in the live industry. And um, obviously people are passing. There's so many deaths that we, as you said earlier, were discussing. Yeah. Um, but I think it's for us who are here to kind of keep the energy as much as, pe as, much as possible al alive. Yeah. Um, and despite, you know, they're not being live venues, et cetera, et cetera, that we keep this energy going. And that's really one of the main reasons why I decided to do it, if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's definitely a time that I don't think we'll ever experience again. So yeah, look up for those who are with us, those who are past condolences to their families. But yes, music is. What is music to you? What is music to you? How has music impacted your life? Let's go from the beginning. <laughs> the massive question, right? It's a very good question, but yeah, music, um, how has it impacted your life? It's very weird. I, like, um, from birth, I've been involved in music, and I've always loved music, and I've always been about music from a young age, banging two notes on the keyboard to, you know, drawing images of of places or me on a stage at a concert when I was, like, six years old. You know, my father keeps all of these drawings, and he, they, my family always knew that music was going to be my thing. I always aspired to be in the studio making music creativity and I do it without effort you know some people their skill set requires you know a lot of effort where people who are creatives don't necessarily need you know we just do it in this instinctively like we just I wake up in the morning and have bass lines in my head I sing melodies walking around the house so it's not it's not, it's not an effort for me so music is definitely within me um and that's a joy and it's a pleasure, you know. It's it's a good thing that we have these kind of skills, you know. 
and it's a great oh. thing. It's a great thing. It, it can never, it can't be taught. Vibes can't be taught. Knowing where to come in on the beat, it, we know these things that we don't necessarily enough. have to know the theory. It's just yeah. within us. It's innate, absolutely, absolutely. And I suppose, obviously, despite it being innate within you, obviously, where you're coming from, you know, your household growing up, being born into the household that you're born into, it would have had such a huge impact on your life. But as you said, it's a skill set that I don't think can be taught. And don't get me wrong, it can be learned, but there are things that just naturally, and, you know, it's why I'm so happy that, you know, we've connected and that we are as we are, you know, because you, you inspire in so many ways, especially for this generation. So tell me about your first recollection of music that you can remember. Where does it go back to and what what was it? It would go back to the typical Sundays, the typical Sundays where, you, you know, your mum's cooking, dad's playing music, going through his record uh, selection um, and standing there for hours. I just remember him standing around and turning to five, hours, just like a session, but it's like at home, just going through records, <laughs> market records. <laughs> just, just the, and, you know, and then mum's like, oh, bring your dad a plate of food type of thing. And she's finished yeah, cooking okay. and some dumpling and some planting and some beans and, you know, and you give him and you sit down and wrestling might be on or something else might be on. But that was our kind of day. It wasn't, it wasn't, it may be special to some, but it wasn't really that, it was nice to have that kind of vibe in the household where, yeah. you know, um, it was great to have, yes, great, two, two great and amazing parents, um, which definitely, I have to say, has, has shaped me and carved me into who I am. That's been amazing. Um, yeah. but yes, those are my kind of early recollections and, Obviously, my parents must have seen I was musical. I have a picture of me in a baby girl with music notes all over me. So that was wow. even from one yeah, of the yeah. first, you know, when they take you, I think my mum took it at um, Safeways, which is now Morrison's. Wow. <laughs> that was you know, one of the first baby portraits. Yeah, the little first, yeah, the mad, mad. But yeah, I don't know. It was just from that time. Um, so, but I've loved it. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So very early on, basically, very Sundays and that whole energy and atmosphere, as you said, both your parents have given you something that's, yeah, it can't be denied. And I think, I think being born into households where there are, where music is such a huge thing, it's, yeah. it's undeniable, you know, that it will become part of who you are to some degree, you know, whether it's that you become a musician, a singer, I think all the people that I know that are performers in some way have had that uh, those very very early years of being completely absorbed or surrounded by music yeah. you know um so how did you get involved obviously we know that your dad is shaka and that's huge in itself but how did you personally get involved we know that or what you've described is that you 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 demonstrated what that was from a very early age or being musical from an early age but what was it that said you know what i'm going to do this because you could have done anything but you chose to do music so what was it how did a you lot, get involved? well a lot of people would be surprised it was more so my mother than my father who kind of okay. done okay. The, the push and the support my father was um busy being shaka so, <laughs> and doing his thing and, and at that time i grew up in the 90s so this was kind of peak time for sound system culture and for him you know he was playing at the rocket he was playing in box so he's my father was everywhere at those times, the whole kind of, and the, 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 that was the whole time of like rave culture and sound system and jungle music and bass music was 90s, you know, so it was more my mum that was kind of pushing me to do training. She got me a drum instructor, so I learned how to play drums. Um, and then I was kind of learning and training on going on how to, um, I was doing trombone lessons at school, secondary school. And then after school, I'd go to the Lewisham Music Academy, which is our MIDI music in Deptford for after school club music, which is a music academy after school. So I'd be there from like three o'clock to like seven, eight o'clock in the evening wow. with black minded young people, artists, yeah. singers and all of that. And being there, and I met some some of obviously my dad's friends is Deptford, it's, it's the ends, it's front line. Yeah. Um, and they knew me and we'd be in there, you know, jamming and we had the run of the whole place, you know, instruments and studios. It's still there now. Um, so that's what, what I've done that. And then I went on to obviously secondary school, Deptford Albany, training, more arts and creative training. Um, 
it was a lot of after school and before school, but I didn't really notice it. The thing is, when you, like I said to you, when you love something, the effort isn't necessarily effort. You, mm. you, you look forward to going. I look forward to going to these after school clubs. And oh, these do you think it was nature or do you think your nature was to naturally get involved? Or do you think it was that push from your mum? Or do you think, no, it was actually in you or it was with your mum's encouragement or a bit of both, actually. It could be both. It's like what I say a lot to people. You can have a skill mm -hmm. and they know how to make fire. But the thing is, I want to make fire better. Know how mm. to make it quicker. Know how to, 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 to actually manually make fire and, and, and do it within 10 minutes. So I, I knew I had a skill, but I, my mind and the, the sharpen it to make sure I was the best at what I was doing. It wasn't to know that, oh, we're going to teach you how to do something. It's how we can better how to what you do. So going to classes and learning how to read music, learning different instruments and how they are used. It all plays a part in the music that I produce today because I know how a trumpet is played. I'm not going to play a trumpet because a, trumpet, a man can't play like that. A man can't play a trumpet like that. You've got to play certain things, how certain things are. Like my, the tunes that I make, like the drums are played as, as I'm, I'm a trained drummer, but I always think to replicate that on stage, yeah, a drummer has to be able to play it. So yeah. why am I going to make music that has all quantized hi-hats and all of these kind of things when it comes to a concert they won't be able to be played it would, doesn't make sense so yes. all of that kind of theory of knowing these kind of things and then also learning i went on from secondary school to college to learn about music business music theory and sound engineering and that was my first kind of not really first but it was my first in-depth learning about copyright contracts all of these kind of things and knowing, knowing about the business. So I saw my dad. I think, I, I think that is what I really, really appreciate about you because it's like, it's, it's everything, it's the whole package. Like people obviously know you as Young Warrior and the sound system, but you're actually a very astute businessman as well. Like on so many levels, it's like every, all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. And I think it's so important that you demonstrate that and that you know it's it's part of what you do and it's part of what you encourage it's not like it's like you've definitely you have made it better do you see what i'm saying because i look to you and i think yeah i definitely have to make sure that is on point you well, know I think we have to because we are we are in the music business and as much as we like music we still have to do business whether we're producing we like to make jump up tunes when we go to sell those tunes that is business when we answer artists the voice on a rhythm it is business when yeah. we anything that we do or even even me even speaking to you now is business i need to know how to speak to you i need to know how to interpret my words i need to know about my diction and pronunciation um yeah. and these are all things which encompass about knowing and and, and sharpening your skill set because Absolutely. it's not just one thing it's not just one thing it's not it's not and i think it's so important, especially in this day and age where we are our own, we are our brands, you yeah. should say. Um, and what we do is not literally just one thing anymore. I think it's, it's so, so critical that things are on point because we, we have to learn from those before us where, you know, record um, producers took and, you know, people weren't compensated, et cetera, et cetera. So no, I think it's so, 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 so important that, that we do that. And the thing is, we have all of these resources at our fingertips. We all have Google, we all have Siri. If we don't know something, we can find it out within a couple of minutes. So there's no excuses anymore for, for any artist to come along and be broke or have a hit and not earn royalties or not know about certain things, know about copyright. And I know a lot of, it's sad to say within our industry, because we do all reggae music, which is so ethical, people kind of see business as a Babylon system, you know? And this is a, that's another thing that I've come up against Everywhere I go and I talk about business, people kind of find it like it's a negative, like we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be concerned with that. However, mm -hmm. then when you see like artists like Yvonne Sterling dead like two days ago and all of these artists die poor who sing yeah. songs, people want to cry out and bawl out. But then when we're talking about artists getting the right royalties or things being signed up to PRS and, you know, and, and payment, what, think, what artists deserve, it's like... People don't want to be associated. I, d I don't get it. It's a double-edged sword in our industry. And I think it's something that I've definitely been, um, I've, I've come up against because a lot of people find it hard to deal with me because I, I, deal, I go by the book. 
I do go by the book. And I no, think no, no. It's, it's important. To do that, so. Absolutely important. And as I said, I think you've definitely raised the bar when it comes to sound system and business because it's like we cannot continue to do things as they have been because what are we then? You know, it's just literally, a, the, the, there has to be progress. And you are an example of that progress. And oh, you're an example as well, T. Don't bother. Don't thank, you. <laughs> thank you. I do try. I do try. I am trying. And no, I think for me, how I see it is that music, or especially sound system, has lasted, you know, in this country, decades. But in order for it to last another... Hold on, we've been lucky, T. We yeah, have to yeah. really, we have to really check it. You know, we had dances where, you know, a holy for smoke is going on and a holy for things is going on in these venues. Do you understand? We got a good fly of many, many years. And exactly. the things are tightening up. So what we used to be able to get away with, we can't get away with anymore. And yeah. it's not saying that we have to stop what we're doing. We have to adapt in some yeah. way to exist. Or yeah. if we don't adapt, have our own places, have our own licenses, have our own venues, if we're yeah. going to talk about that. No, it is so, 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 so important. And I think that, yeah, in order for us to really demonstrate what it is, sound system, for example, we need to be advancing. We need to be taking it to the next level, you know, because it's lasted, it's been around decades, but if we want this to be another 50, there has to be innovation, there has to be change. And as we discussed earlier, there are things that I'm putting in place and hoping to do as an extension to the Kaya brand, as an extension to the sound system world, as an extension to, you know, uh, music and, and myself. So no, it's important. So, so, so important. I think um, it's gonna be, unfortunately to say, I think there's only gonna be a few of us which will be able to make that change as young individuals because a lot of the people that are in power as in within our music are the elders and mm -hmm. we see the elders are passing we see the elders um uh, not being able to grasp what is actually happening in this in this kind of climate that we're in and the climate even before all of this kind of stuff um there is few because and i'm not sure i can count them all on both hands who are kind of young individuals especially afro-caribbean and especially here in the uk um yeah. that are going to be able to do anything unfortunately which is very sad so it's a lot of weight on our shoulders um as the young individuals in this thing and and we're even we're getting on i can't even say i'm kind of young anymore do you get oh. what i'm saying i'm a middle-aged man now <laughs> it comes it does, it does come but um, no, I think, as you, as you rightly said, it's not something that is in abundance anymore. And so we have been and continue to be fortunate. But I think that's why it's so, so important for us to be examples. And I was actually thinking about even the term entrepreneur recently and how I kind of came to know about it, say, in the last maybe mm, five, six, between five to ten years. But then, um, you know, so, so the notion was quite new to me. But then I actually start thinking about sound system operators. And I actually thought to myself, well, no, entrepreneurs, the sound system operators who found a sound system in this country are actually entrepreneurs. Do you know what I'm saying? They, they were just now advancing on it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like their main thing was entertainment. Um, but as we've discussed, the, the business element wasn't that you know, refined, but I think now what we're doing and have the, the skill set and have the tools to do, we can really, really make it much more and expand and, and take it to the next level. It's going to be I, hard for us though, T. Like, I can tell you the amount of years that I've put in and the amount of money I've put in to just even running events. I've been running events since 2009. Um, mm -hmm. I've been doing after carnival parties. I've been doing dances everywhere. And if somebody don't book me up on my own dances, you get what I'm saying? There's yeah. a lot of financial yeah. spend and expenditure that even I throw out there, which is as a, as a middle-aged man, young person, whatever you want to look at it, is very difficult. And we're all here on our own trying to kind of keep sound system alive, keep reggae sound system, dub sound system alive without any financial support from our elders. Do you get what I'm saying? And that is something which is, I think, I'm not going to speak 
speak against them but that i think that is something which is very difficult because if the olders want to kind of keep it going they need to get behind the youngers mm -hmm. and we're here by our, ourselves kind of doing this kind of thing and it's very difficult and i know you know as a fellow entrepreneur you can get you down even sometimes you know and struggles to think god i've got all of these ideas but i just need a grand or i just need two grand or how i can make 10k real quick yeah Definitely. no but this is what i'm saying in a way it's good in a way it's good because we're not getting you know it's not falling in our laps so we're having yeah. to struggle but i just think gosh and be creative you know because despite it being you know a, a challenge we are doing these things you know like when things are up and running we are putting on events we are expanding what we're doing so it's not easy and as you rightly said there isn't enough support especially in the dub sound system arena for us and reggae music as a whole so it is about trying to yeah as much as possible push you know which we continue to do we, we so so continue to do um but yeah tell me so if you if it wasn't music obviously times are hard and um we know we're going to get out of this it's just about keeping that energy up whilst we can and for as long as we can but if it wasn't music then what would it be well i've always had transferable skills so <laughs> and i've always <laughs> identified my transferable skills i know what i can do i know what i'm good at and a okay. lot of my skills companies love you know i'm able to stand up and host the show or i'm able to communicate and do pr and marketing because these are kind of things that we do had have to do anyway with mm -hmm. running events we have mm -hmm. to do pr we have to do marketing we have to do advertising we have to know how to we need to know about logistics we need to know about timekeeping um Absolutely. at the bbc my thing when i was working at the bbc was literally i, I could show you pages and pages of, of call sheets which are basically i have to organize teams from all over the uk no matter where you live transport as in whether it's taxi train public transport flights i've got to book all of that kind of stuff and make sure who arrives on time and make sure there's a parking space for that person and whatever food that person wants and whatever parking that is if that because we have to do like a mobile classes so we have like um, massive like arctic lorries with mobile classrooms and studios we've got to make sure that there's parking spaces for these people we've got to make sure it's near, near. all of these kind of things are you know so I understand it's transferable skills and knowing how to kind of use our skills that we have got to mm -hmm. kind of earn a little a little bread put our skills to, to use yeah no, so I don't know what so I don't know I wouldn't I wouldn't say what it would be specifically but I know I've got enough skills that I can survive <laughs> You know, so it would still be within the industry, definitely, because from what you've described, it sounds like very media, very PR, but still quite music. Well, not music, but yeah, entertainment orientated. Would oh, you, you say? I think, and I think, uh, if the government ever knew what sound system encompasses, it encompasses just to have a sound system and organize about five or six box people to actually drive a van back and forth to sort out budgets and sort out you know to promote a dance and all the, the team buildings the amount of skills that is, that are found within some electronics sound engineering knowing about power knowing about sounds and knowing about homages all of these things it, it's, it's it's a sound system university to when be in a sound you learn so many different skills and you don't just learn them alone you learn them together it's enterprising. This is why sounds can break up and one guy goes over here and builds a sound and one guy goes over here and builds a sound. You know, we have so much skills in just running a sound system yeah. that a lot of people think, you know, you just set up a few boxes. It's <laughs> nah. If only it was set up of the boxes, if only. Honestly, when I think about the, the moves that I've had to pull from driving to setting up the sound to you know, holding the mic to just dealing with, you know, people. It, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And we ourselves are our business, you know. But as you said, we are enterprising. And so it, there it's are... It's always working. And I, and, I always, and I always say, you know, I, I think I said that to my, my, um, my parents a long time because I think my mum wanted me to wash... My dad told me this. <laughs> my mum wanted me to wash her windows outside. And I said, Mum! But people are gonna see me like I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> like, I'm working like I can't I can't be seen to do things. But 
because it's true because I think, yeah, I should, and I did do it actually, but it's at the end of the day, we've got to understand from we step out, people see us, we're working, mm. we've got to be approachable. I, could, I couldn't be walking on the street, but vomiting everywhere, drunk, and all the good thing, and then boom, boom, you see on internet. Do you get what I'm saying? We're always working, we have to know how to carry ourselves. There's no downtime, especially when, yeah, you are the face of your brand and it's 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 a lot bigger than the show on the night and you know people uh, uh attending it's you're always working i i definitely 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 agree yeah, definitely it's difficult it is it is a difficult thing to kind of get that balance and people don't necessarily understand that and you've all, always got to be approachable even when you're upset or whether you're in a bad mood you still got to be approachable so i'm going to take it back and i'm going to ask you about obviously you've been in industry forever as well as you know being born into it but would you say there is a song in terms of yeah that that's made a significant impact on your life or you can really recollect at that time you had an epiphany or something can you think of a song or are there a couple <laughs> there would be a long list T. i'm telling you there would be literally a long list of of songs because a lot of the a lot of the songs, most probably, I would say, are my father's playlists. You know, a lot of the songs that my father plays, as much as they resonate with him, they've become, they've, they've stopped resonating with me. Mm -hmm. And I find reason in that because I now understand why they resonate with him. As yeah. in the sound, the frequency, oh, the so vibe, nice. the feeling. Like, so even though people may say, oh, I hear those tunes all the time, when you play them, it's like, your sound just changes. Yeah. <laughs> it's so nostalgic even. It, can, it, it brings up different things, you know, like it might just be play that song for, but where it takes you, you know, in that moment. It's a, you know, especially reggae music, because reggae music is not like pop music, as in all pop music sounds the same no matter when it was made. We mm -hmm. have an audio and listening and texture timeline within our music, as in we can identify when a song was made in the 70s just by the crackle of the vinyl or yeah, just yeah. by an echo, or just by a reverb, or just the, the, the mic, how, the, how it's voiced. There's every studio has its sound from the 70s, from Channel One to, to, to um, Studio One, to, to Drew Creed, to Pablo Rockers. We have an audio timeline of the music that we listen to, so we can easily just literally time warp into an era, which mm. is something which a lot of music, which is made so professionally up until high standard that you don't even know when it was made or where it was made. And this is the thing that we are very lucky to have as independent musicians, that we have a sound. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. No, and definitely. I think that's not really why it takes you back. I think that's not really why it takes you back, because it was made then, and everything within what you're hearing, when you listen to Scratch Perry's stuff, you can imagine yourself at Black Art Studio. You can, yeah. you can visualise him at the mixing desk, you can visualise the phaser, you can visualise every part of what's happening. So it literally takes you back. So, so, so true. And I think for me that I do have a few, um, but I think it's, it's probably, yeah, there, there are a few which I can say this changed me, you know, kind well, of. Tell us, uh, tell us then, go on. <laughs> I, I, it's Abyssinian's uh, Declaration of Rights and being at Carnival and it was crazy. What year? Because, um, what year? I believe it was probably about 20, around 2012, yeah. 2011, 2012. And I remember being, obviously now that I'm older, I, I can navigate carnival because it's like, you're no longer just going with, you know, your parents or what have you, and you're not going to, you know, you're just not following floats. You've actually now carved out what you're going to carnival for. Yeah. So you're by the sound, and obviously you're there and you're taking in, holding a medi, taking in the vibes. And then a tune comes on and you just think, is it, you, there, there, are, <laughs> you forget where you are. <laughs> there are no words. There are no words to describe when Declaration of Rights came on. And I was just like, I think it was after, soon after that, that I decided I'm going to build a sound because I thought the energy of the people, the music, the sound system, I just thought this is, I've never experienced anything like it. 
Um, never, never, ever, ever. Was you that know, literally when you decided? That was uh, the next day. Uh, that night, I had a dream that I built a sound, and it was like an all female. Right, right. <laughs> the sister that I was there with, I phoned her and I said, "You know, I had a dream that we had a sound." And um, she was like, "Can you know what? We can make it happen, and we probably leave it a lot tidier than the men them after we finish playing." So we had a. <laughs> Why you reveal your secrets in <laughs> Honestly, that's exactly how the story goes. Exactly how the story goes. So Declaration of Rights, Abyssinians, definitely changed the way I... I think it was the start of my education into roots and music. Yeah. You know, there have been treacles of it throughout. Obviously, my dad had a sound, but my dad was really a lot more lovers and rare groove. And so you don't really get it the same way. But when you start dabbling in into um, it, my education started before then, but the actual moment, I would say it was there. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So for me, um, yeah, th there are songs in different genres even that move me. But in terms of what kind of changed how I changed me, yeah, because songs can impact you, but songs that change you, that that was a, that was a song. Of Do you March. think if you heard that if you if you heard that sound on that song, sorry, on a normal PA, say you heard it at a christening, say you heard it at a rave, would it have been the same than hearing it at, on a sound system? No way, no way, because it's like it's a, it's it's definitely uh, an equation. It's like it kind of. Um, how can I how can I describe it? It's it's an equation of the, the energy of the people, the sound system, the sound operator. Um, it's almost like an electric in the air. Do you know what I'm saying? Like why sound system cannot be, you know, um, replicated? It's because it's like it's an equation that you can't actually what? even <laughs> quantify. You know what I'm saying? It's like you cannot quantify quantum physics. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That. So I don't think if it was like at a Christi, at a christening and you kind of like just doing your thing and the song, it would have been nice because of the people that you. But in terms of hitting you, you know that kind of sweet spot that is often referred to. That is something that I think sound system does uniquely um, that no other genre. I think it, it kind of it, other genres get you. But when sound system hits you, it's like you're a changed person, basically. <laughs> you're so changed it's person. the medium, and that's the thing. It's, it's say like how you have TV and you have radio, you have sound system. It's very mm -hmm. important and it's very different. A, a lot of people, you know, they they make sound system music where it, it has to play on the sound system for you to actually hear and feel what I'm making as a producer. You know, it sounds and because when you take it home, you know, a lot of people think sometimes that my father's playing dub plays and it's just playing the forty five. But Ooh. as but from what it's going through, the process that it's going through through preamp and amplifier and speaker and scoop and all of that, it's like you're listening to a different song. Completely. Completely, completely, completely. And I think um yeah, you can't even it's something as as I've described, it's not something you can actually pinpoint. But it's 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 almost magic. That's how I would describe it. It's magic that happens, and you can't quite put into words what happens. But something definitely definitely happens. And um, yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if there are any questions. And um, yeah, see if there are any questions. But if not, then I'm going to round it up and ask. I can't see any questions. Someone's just said frequency, but no, I can't see any questions, so to speak. Answer some. Answer some. Answer some. Ask for some. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> any questions? <laughs> any questions? Yo, people, this is your timing, I believe. Exactly. This is your time. You've got Young Warrior here. It's not a ten of any kind of thing. <laughs> we don't do these things too regular. Okay. Young Warrior, when will you play in the UK? 
when Boris said so, unfortunately, you know, we're in a pandemic, unfortunately, and this, you know, it's a hard time for sound system, we've got to talk about it, you know, sadly, we see a lot of sound system selling their equipment and all of these things, um, so it's very, 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 very sad, um, I don't know, I don't know how a lot of sound systems are managing, because obviously they've got storage bills to pay, um, and they can't keep their, their, their son in their living room. Their wives will be going mad, their partners will be going mad. So it's a sad time. So unfortunately, when we can and when we can gather as normal, or whether it's a virtual thing, but we'd love to gather as normal, because sound system has to be heard and felt. Um, when we can, we will. Thank you. Right, I saw someone ask, can I come and help set up one day? I don't know if that's for you or for me, but no, absolutely. Whenever I'm out, I'm always up for people learning um, the skill of a uh, sound system and setting up. And so, no, I'm more than welcome to. So, yeah, if that's for me, absolutely. Young Maria? Yeah, definitely. I'm, this year, you know, it's been a, a good year of reflection. Um, and I'd like to definitely get more young people involved in the sound system or just more people who are kind of interested in sound system around myself um, and around what I'm doing. Um, so we will be doing, I was, it's, it was there, we are going to be doing a, I am going to do a good, like, little recruiting thing when things are back to normal because it's generation to generation, you know? So I would love to get um, like-minded individuals, um, to get on board, man, and experience what we experience, the travelling, it's, it's, it's a great thing, you know, it's not for the light-hearted, though, it's not for the, like, we, we work some hours, we, we hit road on tours, like, two, three o'clock in the morning, and we, we sleep in the van on, on the motorway sometimes, and all of that kind of stuff, so, it's the real thing. <laughs> it should be a real thing, but it's an experience that you can't really, you can't get anywhere else, because you become, you know, it, you become part of everything that's happening and so yeah no definitely next generation needs to learn more about it and obviously we're forever innovating and and taking it to next level so yes we need to if we are to survive too mm -hmm. we have to has to be done so uh, next question what's next for both of us i'll let you go first what's next for you no to you just answer i just answered one as you wish you were <laughs> All right. What's next for, for me? It says for both of you, but what's next for me? So obviously, Kaya Sound System going hard, hard, hard for the past few years. Um, but what's next is uh, the launch of Kaya Audio, um, which I'm not going to say too much about, but that's coming later on this year. And as we've discussed, it's really about taking it to the next level and about encompassing the business aspect of, of sound a lot more. Um, and trying as much as possible to inspire the next generation, but through a different medium um, and demonstrating that it's not only about, you know, these big speakers, but we are entrepreneurs. What we do is entrepreneurial. And so making that really, really as, as much as possible attractive to the next generation to show that, you know, you, you don't just have to sing or, or produce or there are other aspects that, you know, can be explored. So. That's what Kaya Audio is going to be about. Um, I'm not saying to know, I would love to know why people shy away from the business aspect and the more than the, the behind the scenes. I would love to know why people shy away from that or kind of not want to do that because they have to understand there's to, to, to put on a dance, to give you guys sessions, to give you guys the sound that you need or the sound that you even want. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of logistical or hard work that goes on before even a van turning up outside a venue. Yeah. Um, and it would be good to, for people to kind of support that and get interested in that because that is the key. Because at the end of the day, if we didn't have those things that go on behind the scenes, you wouldn't have a dance to go to. If the venue wasn't booked and somebody didn't send a contract, there's no venue, there's no dance. Do you get what I'm saying? So even if your thing isn't, and I spoke about this in the many of the uh, talks we've spoken about, T, if there's business that needs to be done, you don't have to be a, you don't have to be a sound system operator. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to love reggae music. You don't have to have thousands and thousands of WhatsApp amplifiers. If mm -hmm. you as a person are good at organization, if you yeah. as a person are good at graphic design, you can help us or help any help the sound system fraternity. If you're good in accounting or you have an accounting job and 
you, you know, you have a favorite artist or whatever, lend your services to them. A lot of the managers that we have and a lot of the booking agents that we have aren't sound system people. And it's, they're not there playing the sound system, but they organize, they have skills of organization. They contribute yeah. towards the artist. Definitely. It's, it's, that, that is so true. So, so true. Right. Next one in a nutshell, it's going to be a, quite a big question. So if you can just, yeah, make it concise, but what made you get into sound system? So obviously you spoke at the very start about getting into music, etc. But what made you build Young Warrior Sound System in a nutshell? Because that's a big question, right? Yeah, I thought I needed to. Okay. For me to build my sound, I felt I needed to. It was it was obviously expected. <laughs> you know, I started on the I started on the road as a DJ. You know, playing mm -hmm. in places, and I started to do my own dances. I was playing at Brockwell Park Lambeth Country Show, and I started to do the after parties. And I, there was PA systems and that, but I think it was just expected that I was gonna come with a sound. So I, I kind of came with a sound, and obviously I had I was producing music, so the sound system was my vehicle, was my speaker to actually let people hear what I was producing, mm -hmm. um, because they were getting good responses on other sound systems before my building my sound system. Iration Steppers would play my music, Tasha Buff would play my music, obviously Shaka would play my music. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of guys. Tablet sound system. Um, a lot of guys had my music, and they were playing it out. They were getting good, good, good crowd responses. So I thought, you know what, I need to get. I need to, you know, <laughs> I need to do something about it. So yeah. putting my own. So the music that you hear um, can only be kind of heard on my sound, and it's my thing. It's my voice, and yeah, I, yeah. Oh, I love that. That's that's really huge. Music. Yeah, sound system being your voice. That's it's massive. Um, when's your next release? Do you know? Have you thought about that? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we're gonna. When's the next release? That is undisclosed info right now. Um, it's not, it's not it's an undisclosed tea. You know what? The thing about it is, we as creatives can create every day, especially music producers. We create music without even thinking sometimes. I can sit at a computer or be in a studio for a day and create about five or six albums. It's easy. So sometimes I have to stop myself from creating. Stop my, and remember I have a life to live. I have bills to pay. I have, I want to, you know, I go to the gym. I have certain things going on. I can't just sit and be making music, making music. And I think, you know, over the years I've made so much in a, a massive archive of, archive of music from the ages of, like 15 and 14 up until now that I don't necessarily have to keep creating and creating and creating. You know, there's so much stuff that are there and I, I'm literally sport for choice. So I've invested in myself. I've got out of a lot, a lot of creativity out of me. I'm just there. And that's my kind of, if I'm ever, if I'm ever poor and poor and poor and I need some money, <laughs> maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Okay. Right. I'm not going to, because there's quite a few now. Um, what is the most valuable lesson you've learned since starting your journey in music? Um, yeah, I would say, um, the most valuable lesson, Whew, that one is, that one is a big one. Um, the most valuable, I think, self-belief, definitely, self-belief in what it is that you do, because as I described earlier, going from just that moment at carnival here in a tune, you know, having a dream and then manifesting it, you know, that took a lot of self-belief because it's like, it's not like I said, I'm, I, I want to become a DJ, you know, something very different to say, you know, I want to become a DJ to kind of build and design in and found in my own sound system. So most valuable lesson is I think you have to have self-belief. And another valuable lesson, me personally, I never compete. I dominate what I do, never compete. That's what one of the most valuable lessons I've learned. And that has allowed me, don't get me wrong, there's been times where I've wavered, um, but one of the key things that I've learned is it's about dominating what I do, what Kaya does, and advancing on that and not kind of competing or comparing with anyone else, just slaying in my own lane, so to speak. So that's what it is for me. How about I'm um, talking about self-belief. I think that's a part 
that definitely affects a lot of young sound systems coming into things. Like it's, it's a very intimidating industry. You have a lot of strong characters um, <laughs> that you, you can be up against. You have a lot of strong opinion from mm -hmm. people who think you should do it this way, you should do it that way, and how you're doing it is wrong. You know, you have to be a very strong character to believe in what you're doing. Otherwise, your head can literally spin to where you think that you've come up with a way of doing something. And yet people who have been in the industry for so long are then telling you that you're doing it wrong, even though sound system is, like I said, your own voice. Um, I would say I've, the thing is, OK, our journeys are different. Mm -hmm. As in, people would may think I've had it easier because I have a father who is in the industry. However, I would say it's been even more difficult because I have an expectation put upon me before I've even said anything. Yeah. And people don't necessarily understand that. Mm -hmm. People think, oh, you've got your dad and it's just easy, the door's just open. But people need to understand that the, doors will, the door will be there, mm -hmm. but only if you're good can you even go through or even last. You know, I could be somebody's son and I could be I could be Dennis Brown's son and say I'm a singer and sound rubbish. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's true. No, but it's true. No, but it's true. It just, it's not about who you are. It's about if you are good at what you do. It doesn't matter about if you're son of this or daughter of that or my uncle is flipping yeah. Jimmy Cliff or whatever. Yeah, that will, that will maybe have somebody's ear to listen, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that you're good. I can close my ear back if you're rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> right back. <laughs> no, no, no. It's That's so why journeys are different, but yet the same. Mm, it's so true. So true. Right. Last question. It's actually about one of your tunes. Um, let's have a look at what I did it's... see it, T. I, I did see it. <laughs> you didn't? I did. Or you I did. did, I did. Okay. I can't, it's, not, it's, not, it's not my tune. I love the tune. It's a tune. It's great. But I don't control the tune. I just okay. pass on the tune as a sound system. And, you know, I know the producer and I know the singer. I don't know what is going on behind the scenes concerning that 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 track. I okay. don't know. I don't know nothing about it. I was just a person who was given the tune to play, to promote. Whatever else happened after that, happened after that. I do not know. I'm not, I'm not involved in the actual recording of that tune. Cool. Right. Well, we're going to round it up there. We've answered as many questions as we can. Um, Obviously, yeah. this series is called Music Is. For me, music is the answer. Music is my therapy. Music is my peace. What is music for Young Warrior? Music is? Music is me. Music is my life. Like, no matter what I do, no matter what nine to five I may have, no matter what, whatever I, I do, uh, you will always still can sit me in front of a keyboard and I can still bang. So... <laughs> yeah. music is something that you can't ever take away from me I love it and it is me and there's just some people that are blessed with certain skills and certain abilities and music is just me <laughs> yeah. blessings, blessings, blessings well thank you people you've hear, heard it live and direct from Young Warrior himself and myself Tarly and thank you that was the first in the series music is catch me yeah. next with a guest thank you so much so so much young warrior and yeah catch us on our pages at young warrior at audio by tali lotus and yeah keep the faith keep following sound system big up um i'd like to say people obviously support young artists support young sound systems if you can show your curiosity you can have the sounds that you love and the people that you love but also be curious to find out what other people are doing and what people are up to there's a lot of gems out there that we don't want to miss there's a lot of gems out there that need your support and need your love. Even liking a few of their posts is great, you know, because there's not a lot of financial ability out there for people to boost their posts or to do a lot of advertising. So if you like something, do talk about it, do spread the news, talk about sound system, talk about the new sounds that are out there. Um, and yeah, have your favourites, but also show love to the youngers, man. Please show love to the youngers. Thank you for mentioning that because, yeah, that's how... Support Tali, she's there, she's there. So anybody who is on my page that didn't know about her. Actually, Tali, you have to talk about yourself and your journey. How long have you... Come on, you have to say... <laughs> you know what? It's about you. But no, my journey... Kaya was founded in 2016, right? Yeah, and Kaya, um... but you haven't even said... <laughs>
honestly, I'm going to have a live all for myself and people are going to be able to ask me all the questions, but I wanted this to be about my guests and what music yeah. is to them. But I'm I going to have people obviously on my side to see who you are. No, absolutely. So, so you can make it happen. You can, you can put together um, your live and I'll be there. You can interview me. <laughs> How about that? You're on it now, P. You're on it now. <laughs> Especially for me. So yeah, no, um, no. Kai has been around for four years, five years now, um, and yeah, I'm one of three female sound systems in the UK. Um, Say founded. Again. Say, that again. Say again. One of three female sound systems. One of only three female sound systems in the UK. You heard and, that? You heard? Yeah, <laughs> it's huge. Um, what I do is is amazing in terms of, you know, where I've been able to really take sound system. And I think what I've done in four years is really mahusip. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to have a live of my own and um, I'll be able to tell everyone all about it. So if you don't already follow me, follow my page now, obviously from Young Warrior. And, um, yeah, you can find out so much more about me. Blessings. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Guys, Big up. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've enjoyed. Big up yourselves. Yes. Take care. Bye. Good.